Diablo 4 Season 4 is set to kick off very soon, and I'm going to give you a ton of tips so that way you can start off crushing Season 4, get to leveling up and progressing very quickly, and hopefully keep you from making a bunch of mistakes early on in Season 4 that can cost you a lot of time. There's a ton of new things in Season 4 you need to know about, so here we go. First, we're going to talk about leveling in Season 4. Ideally, you want to complete the campaign and all of that stuff if you haven't done that already. What you're going to want to focus on outside of that is finishing the Season 4 seasonal questline first. With Season 4 being Loot Reborn, I don't expect a ton of different seasonal changes this go around for Season 4, but you want to complete the seasonal questline first thing as quick as possible so that way you can get whatever buffs or bonuses that come from that seasonal questline itself. Ideally, there's a bunch of power upgrades that come with these seasonal quest lines and completing them, as well as a lot of XP and additional seasonal power boosts. Now, once you complete the seasonal quest line, some of the new things you're going to want to look out for is the next best thing that you can do besides just running dungeons over and over. But one of the new best strategies for leveling is going to be Helltides, and this was tested extensively in the PTR. Helltides are not only amazing for leveling, but they're also going to give you a lot of the materials you need for a bunch of different things inside of the game that you actually need to do anyways. So go ahead and doing them and getting a lot of these materials on top of getting a lot of XP that Helltides are now going to offer with a lot of the new features makes it one of the best leveling methods for Season 4. For instance, they've taken the Blood Harvest and Helltide and essentially combined them together and in a lot of ways testing this against the resetting dungeons method that was previously done to constantly level. This is better in a lot of ways. Next, I'll go into a lot of the differences in Season 4 for Helltides to show you why it's extremely good for not only leveling, but just playing in general. With a lot of the Helltide buffs, it's not only great for leveling now, but it's actually fairly fun to play because of the rewards that you get. So one of the big changes is Helltides will be available in World Tier 1 and World Tier 2, so it makes early game leveling much better. Early game leveling previously was just running throughout the world and doing dungeon resets over and over and over again, but now we have Helltides that we can do in World Tier 1 and World Tier 2 that will scale equivalently to your level, making them not impossible to do at those early stages or early levels. And make sure you don't sleep on these because they're going to be big levelers early game. One of the biggest changes is all of the chests will be mystery chests. So if you're familiar with Helltides, they have the mystery chest that gives you an extremely amount of good loot or good gear, as well as a lot of additional materials that you want for things like upgrading your potions and other things like this. Now, all of those chests are going to be those high level mystery chests that you've constantly been searching for on different Helltide websites, etc. And those are replacing the other chests that have like the regular armor and stuff in them. And this is great because now it's much more rewarding to do Helltides because you have a lot of these chests that you can open. And again, they give you five times the amount of rewards as all of the other chests. Now that they're focusing on making sure that these are the primary chests you get, it makes running Helltides and doing the content much better because you get much, much more juicy rewards from doing them. Now they've taken away a lot of the annoying danger in Helltides and buffed a lot of the mob density. So as you can see, as I go through some of the examples here, there are a lot more enemies to fight, meaning a lot more XP overall. And they've gotten rid of a bunch of some of the, again, annoying things that Helltides previously had, such as some of the annoying mobs and the meteor showers in particular that can sometimes one shot you or knock you off your horse and completely ruin your progress of advancing through the Helltides, getting rid of to a degree, a lot of deaths and helping you not lose a lot of senders just off some random BS. Season 4 also adds the threat meter as you kill enemies within the Helltide will continue to raise to different levels. As you hit different levels of the threat meter, it will essentially spawn different things like different sorts of enemies or barrages of enemies on top of you that you can actually kill, earn a lot of XP and a lot of additional progress towards the next bar in the threat meter. The higher level your threat meter gets, the more enemies that will continually come at you and spawn on top of you, meaning the more XP and the more overall loot rewards. So the quicker you can clear groups of enemies and run through Helltides, the quicker your threat meter goes up and the quicker you get XP and overall good loot and materials. Once you get to the end of that threat meter, gigantic worms will continuously spawn on you with big groups of enemies and once you complete that entire threat meter bar, a large amount of enemies will all spawn on top of you at once, giving you a massive pool of XP right in your hands. This change alone makes Helltides way better and again helps you get those juicy rewards from the mystery chest, XP, all the materials that are included, etc. Now there are two big events that actually are now in Helltides and also give a decent amount of XP with constantly spawning enemies. So if you run into these events, make sure you do them because of the amount of enemies that spawn. If you can clear them fast enough, they're totally worth doing for the XP and the amount of threat meter you get. 
Now, another thing you'll get throughout adventuring in the Helltide is the Accursed Ritual, which will summon the Blood Maiden boss on the map within the Helltide. Now, this is an event that everyone in the area will be alerted for on the map. And if you see this, you need to make sure you're going to it and don't miss out on it because it gives you not only a lot of XP, but a bunch of different materials, possible tempering guides, and a bunch of more rare chances at getting unique and high level loot, as well as potential materials for summoning another Blood Maiden. Also, so many enemies spawn at this event, it is an insane source for XP. So if you see this on the map, forget everything you're doing in the Helltide, run to it and make sure you complete this with everyone else because it is totally worth it over almost every other thing in the Helltide when someone actually spawns it in. Next is at level 100 you now get to experience the pit and we'll do a full video breaking down everything pit related to make sure you get the most efficiency possible. But ideally the pit is a race against a 10 minute timer and you race to the end while also having to clear enough enemies. Once you clear enough enemies that essentially opens up a ref to a new area that sends you straight to a mini boss. Now the mini boss at the end of the dungeon can get very difficult at the later stages of the pit. Once you clear this mini boss, that mini boss will drop possibly good gear, but also master working materials that you'll use to later upgrade your gear for the end game. Now this system is meant for later game content, for instance, around hitting level 100, this will allow you to scale your gear from the end game tier to the min max, I'm going to destroy everything in the game tiers. So this gives you something to push and really push your character to make them extremely overpowered. But for right now, know that's the end game system to be looking out for once you get close to hitting level 100. Another new add is tormented versions of boss being all of the current bosses you know and love, Duriel, Xur, Ice Beast, all of those guys, right? They're adding tormented versions of all those bosses that give unique drops and higher level drops, but I wanted to bring it up to introduce it and to let you know that you might make a mistake on some of these bosses if you're not familiar with them. And that is that you may not actually want to go ahead and engage in doing them very early on until we figure out what the initial drop rates are. So for instance, you have to use certain materials to spawn and fight specific bosses like let's say Duriel. For instance, one of the new tormented bosses and Ariel, that is the tormented version of the Duriel boss. Now in order to spawn that boss instead, that boss will be level 200 and much more difficult, but you actually have to spend five times the material that it would actually take to summon the normal level of the boss or Duriel in this case, to actually summon that boss and fight it. So it's very expensive to do so material wise, but again, you get a chance at certain uniques, you get a chance at certain uber uniques that you might not get a chance for at some of the other boss fights. Now, early on, you want to try and avoid these because it's not necessarily worth the amount of materials yet that it costs to actually summon the boss and fight them. Although it will be worth it to do at least once so that way you can get your resplendent spark, which will progress you towards getting a default uber unique after you earn a total of four. So fighting at least one of them will definitely be worth it. Until you hit level 100 and start getting a very powerful character, it may not necessarily be worth focusing all of your time on because of the material cost involved. Ideally when hitting level 100, you'll wanna start focusing on the pit and master working all of your gear to make yourself more powerful. Keep in mind these bosses will require the regular mats it takes to actually summon and fight the boss in the first place. They'll also require in addition stingy and stones which actually come from the pit itself and higher levels of the pit. So you need to complete the pit to even get the materials in general now to summon these bosses. So just keep that in mind because the pit is going to be necessary. Next I'll talk about some of the OP classes because every class in season four is going to be viable. Now, one of the big gripes early on was there were just OP meta classes. And if you weren't running those, you really didn't have a chance at some of the higher level in game content. Now with a lot of the changes and a lot of the balances over time, season four looks to be the biggest balance season yet with season four allowing us to temper and masterwork and adjust a lot of the affixes we get on a lot of our gear, as well as the codex of power changes allow us to make viable builds on every single class, some of which we haven't even discovered yet. Almost every class will be viable with upgrades, so keep that in mind that no matter what class you pick, you're not gonna get strewn out of the meta. And even if a class is doing 1 billion damage, there's still a chance your class is gonna be able to do in the hundreds of millions with enough building on your character. Now, there are a lot of gearing changes you need to be aware of in season four because it can get confusing, but I'm gonna break it all down for you to make it extremely simple. Ideally, less is more is what Blizzard is going for with Diablo 4 Season 4, meaning we're gonna get a lot less loot, but we're gonna get a lot more meaningful loot, meaning a lot less time sorting through our gear and actually finding gear that we want 
at one quick glance. So they've decreased the number of affixes that come on legendaries and rare gear. So the first big change is a lot of the affixes that drop on the gear are much more meaningful affixes to your actual build itself. So for instance, to give you an example, things that we want on boots, let's say movement speed, they've upped the amount of movement speed that drops on boots and lessened the amount of, let's say, damage on Saturday while I'm riding my horse at 50 miles an hour. The much more meaningful affixes have been increased in their amount that they drop on these pieces of gear. So more than likely, you're going to be seeing a lot more CDR, a lot more multiplicative damage affixes. For barbarians, a lot more strength instead of dropping intelligence on pieces of gear because that makes no sense. Things like that, giving us much more loot that we can actually use and way less junk, making our loot and playing experience much better. The second big change is they've decreased the number of affixes on rares and legendary equipment. So currently rare equipment is much less viable than legendary equipment. It used to be you wanted to find rare equipment that would work for your build and then throw on an aspect. It's different now as you level up, rare equipment is going to be basically garbage. And that's because rare equipment only currently comes with two affixes. Legendary equipment itself will come with three affixes. These are core affixes on the actual gear itself. So for instance, a rare piece might have, let's say movement speed and plus to strength. Whereas if you find a legendary set of boots, it might have movement speed and strength and a third affix so again they have three affixes on legendaries and two on actual rares making the legendary gear by default automatically better so as you progress towards end game you want to find good legendary equipment because of having the three affixes on them and then just re-aspect that gear as you need it now the third big gearing change rares are important because we would pick them up to get our veiled crystals which are one of our primary crafting resources in Diablo 4, it's the crafting resource we constantly almost run out of, and it's what we use to essentially upgrade everything, even in Season 4. Now, the big change here is you can continue to pick these up to deconstruct them for Veiled Crystals since we're getting less loot now, but one of the big changes is Legendary Gear will also now give you Veiled Crystals at a comparable rate, meaning by deconstructing Legendary Gear, you're going to be getting Veiled Crystals just like you would with Rare Gear, so it's no longer that you have to pick up rare gear because legendary gear will break down into those same materials that we absolutely need in order to perform our upgrades. So that's something to also keep in mind. They've also drastically decreased the amount of materials that you're actually going to need to upgrade and re-enchant some of your weapons. And with the amount that it's decreased, it actually gives us much more efficient upgrading and stuff in terms of the amount of weapons we find. We get a lot more materials to do the upgrading and hopefully shouldn't be completely running out like in previous seasons. And finally, the last point I wanna make on some of the important gearing changes is that now all you will have to do, and this is literally all you have to do when looking at your gear, you find a piece of rare gear later in the game not worth it because it only has two affixes you find a legendary piece of gear you look at it once you get past a certain point they're all the same item power level so you don't have to worry about the overall core damage on the weapon etc you need to look at the piece of gear you need to look at the three core affixes that it automatically spawns on it if they're all three ones you want and they're all good rolls take that piece of gear use it in your build if they're not and they're garbage you can salvage it do whatever you want with it those three core affixes at this point are the only big things you're making a decision on late game for your gear making sorting through gear much better and helping you build the best build you can much much easier next one of the biggest things with season four that we've been begging for is the codex of power changes but i have a couple things you may not have heard of but even if you know these changes there's a couple things you may actually have missed so if you're not familiar with the Codex of Power changes, changes it so that way you don't just unlock the base level of the aspect itself. Essentially, if you do a dungeon and unlock an aspect, you unlock that base version. But as you salvage new aspects, the highest level of the one that you salvage goes into your Codex of Power permanently for that season. Meaning if you imprint that aspect onto any piece of gear at any time, you can do it as many times on any piece of gear that you want, and it will take that highest level that is sealed in the Codex of Power. Meaning if I get a max bold chieftain's ring with max cooldown reduction, meaning if I salvage that, it'll be in my Codex of Power forever, then I can apply it to any piece of gear that will take that aspect, and it will be at that highest level at every single time that I do it. Meaning you can essentially max out your Codex of Power, so you can have an infinite amount of enchanting on any piece of gear that you want and you always have the best version of that aspect available this is a huge quality of life change for season four and again makes the loot much more important in terms of focusing on your core affixes that you actually get on the gear 
Now, one of the big things is this codex of power is account wide with the reduced cost of enchanting. This is also going to let us test many more aspects on our gear, be much cheaper to move aspects around between different pieces of gear. Before, if you had one in one spot and they were all shifted on different pieces of gear, you kind of had to re imprint a lot of them. It wasn't worth it, but now you can test aspects on a lot of pieces of gear much, much easier, especially late game. And also, if you do play the Eternal Realm, you can actually play the season and it be beneficial to your Eternal Realm. Because if you play the season and you unlock a lot of the stuff in the Codex of Power and get close to maxing, let's say some of it out, once it transfers to the Eternal Realm, it will take all of that progress, shift it over to the Eternal Realm, and you'll have all your maxed out aspects right there being able to use and let's say test if you want on any of your characters. Now, in terms of gear, the greater affix system is something you need to fully understand to make sure you can take the best use of it and be a master at it to make an amazing build in season four. One of the biggest things here is it makes drops actually super exciting to get because when you drop an item, it will have an icon on it or glow a specific color and you'll know it has a greater affix and that affix's power will actually be increased by 1.5x or 50%. So if you find some item with 20% cooldown reduction and then if you find the same item but that has a greater affix for a cooldown reduction, it's not going to be 30%, which is insane because it can bring a lot of builds online and make them infinitely times more powerful. And I mean infinitely once you find enough of these things. Now this currently only drops on ancestral legendaries and unique gear, but if it's an ancestral legendary or a unique piece of gear, you can find not only one greater affix on him, but max greater affixes on those items. Meaning for unique items, sometimes you can find four greater affixes. It's extremely rare, but you can find them and have an overpowered, and I mean overpowered piece of gear. Same with Ancestral Legendaries, you can find up to three greater affixes on them with maxed greater affixes on those items, making them literally god tier items. For finding in-game gear and master working the most powerful gear for your build in Season 4, it's going to be important eventually towards the later stages of in-game that you find items with these greater affixes. Now, one thing about greater affixes that you do want to pay attention to is if you find an item with a greater affix, you can actually make one big mistake with that item. One of the big mistakes you can make with those greater affixes is since greater affixes come random on pieces of gear, if you re-roll it, it's not that spot that's a greater affix, it's the affix itself that is greater. So if you re-roll that affix, you will roll it to something else that is actually not a greater affix, that's a standard affix. So you can do that and wipe out a greater affix from a really good item so keep that in mind before you actually go to try that one time and then lose your item and then be really bummed about it so with season four they've added tempering and master working both and i'm going to show you how to use those efficiently to make really op gear but some of the mistakes again you don't want to make when starting to do these so tempering allows you to essentially make custom gear but it allows you to put new affixes and new effects that we've never seen before on gear to customize and specialize specific builds and bring them online so to break it down for you gear will ideally if we take an ancestral legendary it will have three core affixes that ideally you want to help your build you additionally have two other affix spots and these are for tempering your gear when you actually go in and temper your gear you essentially need to find tempering manuals throughout playing the game and unlocking them in the world of sanctuary as you unlock these tempering manuals you can use them as much as you want anytime you want so each item can essentially be tempered for instance if we look at let's say a pair of boots you'll see there are six different options here that you can temper them in these different categories now the way this works is you'll click one category you can essentially select from a list of recipes that you've already discovered and once you click that there will be three to six different tempering options for different things you can add to that gear once you select this and you actually go to temper the item you have a random chance of any one of those three or six or however many are actually in that tempering recipe randomly one of those will be put on your gear now you can re-temper and re-roll that item to try and get a different affix in that same spot but again it's random and ideally you try and roll until you get the main thing you want on the item itself now essentially there are two different tempered affixes an item can have and for each one of those the first time you roll that tempered affix it is completely free and really doesn't cost you anything once you roll that and it gets put on that piece of gear you then have five additional attempts between both of those affixes to re-roll either of them and get them the way you want them or get the affixes that you really want for your build on those pieces of gear keep in mind with tempering once you run out of those five tempered tries 
you're done, it's over, you can't roll them anymore. So you can essentially brick a piece of gear fairly easily by running out of enough tempered spots. And again, it's random, so sometimes it's just going to happen. Again, tempering these items to add these additional affixes or effects increase your power or overall damage for your build by quite a lot once you get a lot of them online and going so doing this early will give you a bunch of additional power for your build and don't be afraid to do this early because again it helps you get through the content level up quicker and get resources quicker to go ahead and continue tempering so holding out to the end doesn't make sense once you can start tempering start experimenting with your build to see what best works for it so you can bring it online as quickly as possible. Now next is the new crafting system masterworking that you can actually make a couple big mistakes on. So make sure you pay attention to this section. Masterworking is the new in-game crafting system that will be in the game forever now. So it's important you go ahead and master it and how it works. So ideally you can masterwork gear and each piece of gear can actually be masterworked up to 12 times. So every single level you masterwork your gear, the affixes on the gear itself actually go up by 5% each time. So if we go from level one to level two master working, we go up 5%. If we go from level two to level five, the affixes again go up 5%. They go up 5% of the base value of the affix itself, not the actual new affix value, because eventually if you did that, it would go to infinity and everybody would just break the game. So keep that in mind, it works off the base affix values. So if you start at 20% cooldown reduction, each time you go up 5%, you'll go up 1% and that will go until you max out the item. Now, every four levels at levels four, eight, and 12, one random affix itself will actually get a 25% boost. And although this is random, if this lands on some very important affixes on your gear, you can really have an OP build very quickly by masterworking this gear and hitting those levels and getting that big actual boost. For instance, if we have cooldown reduction on some gear and happen to hit that 25% boost on cooldown reduction every single time just by random chance, we'll end up with like 120% cooldown reduction bonus by the end of upgrading that item. That will bring a lot of builds to the point of no one touching it, which is why masterworking is so powerful. Now with masterworking, you get the materials to masterwork from the actual tiers of the pit that correspond. For instance, tiers one to 20 give you obusite, and this is the material you use to actually masterwork your gear from levels one to four. As you increase in ranked tiers of the pit, Again, you get higher level crafting materials. Again, you get higher level crafting materials that translate to the higher ranks of masterworking. So you need to make sure you're doing the pit to get the materials to masterwork. And it's really not much more complicated than that. As you continue to get these materials, continue to upgrade your gear and make it more powerful. But one thing early on you want to pay attention to is try and get all of your gear if possible to level four first before you necessarily start masterworking all of your gear, one piece of gear all the way up to level 12, primarily because it makes you a lot more powerful overall and it costs a lot more of the lower materials, which you can actually get a lot more quickly and it can actually help you progress much quicker overall. Now, one of the big things I want to note about masterworking that people will be confused on early on is if you get to, let's say, tier 20 of the pit and you continue going through ranks of the pit, but now you're getting the higher level upgrade materials, but you haven't upgraded much of any of your gear using the lower level materials because now you're getting the higher level ones and you're not level four on your masterworking yet on a lot of pieces, so you can't upgrade them using the higher materials. Well, basically, if you just go to the alchemist, you can trade in those higher level materials that you're getting from higher ranks of the pit and actually trade those for more of the lower level materials, again, through the alchemist. This will allow you to keep doing higher levels of the pit and keep you from having to just grind those lower levels for lower materials over and over and over again, but allow you to trade that still for a lot of the lower level materials so you can upgrade your gear and get it to that next point that it actually costs the higher materials to continue to upgrade. And you can continue to do this as you move through the pit and trade your higher level materials for more lower level ones. So it always makes sense to do the higher levels of the pit if you're doing them effectively and quickly enough. And again, one tip is make sure you target one piece of gear at a time, upgrade it all the way to level four, move on to your next piece of gear. And this gives you much more power over time and makes you a lot more effective in running through levels of the pit this way. And the final thing I want to mention about masterworking is as you continue to level, you wanna make sure you keep your eye out for gear with grid or affixes on them. The reason being is because while you don't have to necessarily initially, due to the fact that greater affixes are much rarer drops than regular pieces of gear, they are infinitely times more powerful. So if you have one piece of gear with regular affixes and another piece of gear that you find with two greater affixes that actually fit your build, if you masterwork with those two greater affixes on those items, 
let's say instead of having let's say the regular one has 20 percent cdr let's say the greater affix item already starts with 30 percent cdr when you upgrade it and that 5% per level kicks in and that 25% bonus hits those affixes, they jump up way greater in value because the original base value of that affix is much higher than the regular gear. That's why not only having a greater affix on a piece of gear is much more powerful, but masterworking that piece of gear is even more powerful, which is why once you start finding those, you want to make sure you start slowly swapping them out with your regular pieces of gear because it gives your character a lot more stats, a lot more power, and a lot more affix value, and overall having a much more OP and beefier character. You also want to figure out the best gearing loop for you. And what that means is don't be afraid to temper because you don't have the best gear yet. Don't be afraid to go ahead and start masterworking to increase your power because you don't have the perfect gear. Eventually you will find the perfect gear. But again, you want to make sure you're keeping an eye out for those greater affixes because those will eventually become your best in slot gear. So as you find them, make sure you swap them out and replace them. But in the meantime, as long as you know the gearing systems and how they work and how to use them effectively, don't worry about finding the best in slot gear and wasting upgrade materials. Upgrade your character, get more powerful, and eventually as you continue to play and do the higher levels, you'll find better gear to replace your gear and this cycle will continue until you have an OP and fully built out character. That and continue to just do a ton of pit runs until you get so many materials. If you follow all those tips, I promise you will conquer and literally obliterate season four and everyone will be jealous of your character. That being said, if this helped you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and stay on the lookout for more Diablo 4. Thank you guys.